Welcome back to the Horror Academic. And today, I know I said I was done with my research for um, uh, women in, uh, you know, black women's representation in horror, but I decided to dig a little deeper because honestly, ending on Blackenstein was not a good way to end my research. It was not leaving, not letting me settle well on that. So um, I dug a little deeper and I found ways to watch a couple other movies. So. One of the ones I had been looking for, but is out of print, and like was going for like two hundred dollars on eBay, was the movie Abby from nineteen seventy four. I was able to find it. Uh, someone had posted it on IMD. Uh, I'm sorry, not IMDb, but on YouTube for free. Um, I believe the site was called Real Black. I'll put a link if I can find it. Um, now Abby's a movie. Considering the thing that got me kicked off on this whole project was uh, the documentary Horror Noir and even the uh, the book. I'm reading the book for my project as well. And one film that they kind of talk about as being kind of like a low point of black exploitation was Abby. And seeing that I had sat through Blackenstein, I needed to see if this was true. And you know what? I didn't agree. I thought it wasn't that bad. Um, if anything, Abby is an excellent exorcist clone, which was very popular at the time. I mean, we still see that happen now in like lesser versions, but you know, anytime a film would come out and uh, especially a horror film and do well, you know, you'd have like a dozen clones pop up right after. Um, we, I've had, I've talked with people about how, how many alien clones existed within a year or two of the movie coming out. I mean, we know star Wars led to a whole rash of clones. Um, it's very common, especially with, with genre stuff. So the film, The Exorcist, came out in 1973. And this is kind of at a very big point in when black exploitation is starting to really get going, right? So it's coinciding. And of course, you know, regardless of the color of the people in the films, horror movies tend to do well in like, you know, black communities. It's just, it's always been that way. Um, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reason behind that. And, you know, for more on that, I would definitely recommend the horror noir documentary in the book it really does a very good job of explaining, you know, blacks in films and black horror films. So all that to say, um, I was surprised how much I enjoyed Abby because they kind of write it off as being a silly film. They actually use the term silly movie. Um, and in some ways I can see why, um, Abby's a story of a woman who ends up possessed by a demon and it makes her it's it's a um a sex she becomes sex crazed the demon is um it's a little convoluted but sorry the the gesture is is that they spend the first half hour of the film really setting up how pious a family this is they're a uh, devout christians the um, the husband Emmett is a, uh, a, a reverend. Uh, Abby, his wife, is you know she kind of keeps up a lot of the uh, services within the church. Uh, they talk about how she, she was getting certified for the daycare. She she just got certified to do marriage like uh, you know marriage uh, counseling. Um, she's very active in the choir, so she's very much a part of his life within the church. And she takes on that role, and she's very proud of it. Um, so to set up the fact that they are a religious household um, is to give it even more credence when something so, uh, you know, opposite her, her personality takes over. Um, actually, there's a little preamble to the story where you see um, a... a they don't really say it. It's not necessarily a seminary school, but there's... Um, a professor who is having a going away party with students and he's a reverend as well and that's William Marshall and I thought that was really cool he so he's the guy who played Blackula in the two Blackula films and in this film he is um, kind of um, he essentially plays the role of the exorcist um, he's set up as not only uh, you know, a religious man, but a learned man. So he's very linked to all of this. And one of the, and the, his students have a picnic for him because he's getting ready to go on an expedition because he's also an archaeologist. And they give him a metal cross 
uh, you know, custom made for him. And uh, he goes off. He's in, I believe, Nigeria on an archaeological dig. Meanwhile, his son, uh, Emmett, who's also a reverend and Abby, are moving into their new home, With uh, and Abby's mother is helping them out. It's this kind of back and forth between the two stories, but it does, it lines up almost exactly the way the exorcist does, where the priest, who's also an archaeologist, goes on a dig, and he finds something at the dig, and the next thing you know, this person is taken over by the spirit and it ties to more to the archaeologist than the person who becomes possessed. So I thought that was pretty well done. I mean, if anything, this film just suffers from a poor budget. I think if it had been given, um, you know, a little bit more to work with, it would have been better. Because, uh, you know, see some of the effects are a little laughable. Um, once she becomes possessed and she gets kind of really going because she, she goes demonic... Um, you know, Abby kind of has like this foam, coming. it's kind of like the, the Alka-Seltzer trick, you know, a foam in her mouth and that's cheesy. Yeah. I mean, you, you, when she's possessed, you hear a man's voice come from her. It's not quite as well done as in the exorcist, you know? Um, so it's a little bit laughable, but these are things I think that are more technical issues. I thought the actors that were in it, I mean, I had to look her because it was some really good actors. So, all right. I already said William Marshall, who we know from the Blackula films, but also, Okay. The, uh, her husband, Emmett, is played by Terry Carter, who was in Foxy Brown, and what I more remembered him for when I was a kid, he was in the original Battlestar Galactica, that's pretty cool, um, Abby herself, Carol Speed, she was in Big Bird Cage, uh, Black Samson, Disco Gava, so she's a, kind of a staple in this scene, so that's cool, and then, uh, the thing that really got me, I thought was cool, was that, uh, Austin Stoker, who's her brother, who's a police detective. He was in Assault on Precinct 13 and Battle for the Planet of the Apes. I actually met him at a chiller convention years ago. So I was like, wow, that's that's really cool that he's in this movie. So it kind of blew me away that this movie was so hard to get a hold of that I had to, you know, stream it online. But, um, and like a, a bootleg at that. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it really follows the mold well as an exorcist clone. Um, you know, it's it deals with... And it kind of infuses uh, Christianity versus these kind of uh, like African religions. And it's an idea of melding them in order to fight the demon because the demon comes from an African faith. But, you know, it's, I thought it was just, I, you know, like I said, if anything, it suffers from its time and its budget. You know, it, it's very much a film of the 70s because once it gets going and she's kind of out and about, there's a lot of bad wah-wah guitar, you know, like funk music kind of sort of it's that kind of this is what a city night strip looks like you know kind of thing those scenes are cheesy a little bit but i mean honestly um i i mean i've seen much worse films than this so what i will say is the argument that's brought up uh in both the documentary and the book car noir about abby is what what they are considering silly about it is the nature that they deal with black female sexuality. And this I can buy, I understand that their theory is it becomes the fear of black women. And I understand that. And you can get that within this. And I don't think, I think if, uh, if it was to be remade, perhaps you could encapsulate that in a way that, that takes advantage of that being the message of a film. But um, at the same time, all of the heroes of the story are men, which mimics more the exorcist kind of situation, where even the mother, who in this case is, is Abby's uh, mother, you know, uh, it, it feels useless in the situation. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say, of all the black exploitation movies that I've watched for this project, this is not the worst film I've watched. Uh, it kept my interest. It was, um, like I said, well acted. Um, and it's just, it, it falls into the trope of taking a popular horror film and recreating it in a different vibe. And you know what? That's, that's kind of, a, you know, an industry within the industry, shall we say, of horror. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me too much. So all in all, um, you know, if you're a fan of 
I want to say exorcism films. I don't know if you can be a fan of that as a subgenre. I don't know if that's really a big enough subgenre. Then again, there was quite a few of them in the early 2000s with like exorcism of Emily Rose and stuff like that. And it has some moments that definitely made me think of Amityville, but then I actually had to look it up. Amityville, the book hadn't even come out yet. So yeah, I think, I, I think it deserves another watch uh, for people who wrote it off as just a a crappy movie that came out in this period that just happened to feature black actors. Um, I think it wasn't a bad movie. So that's my take on it. Uh, of all, you know, kind of the, the cheesy tropes that you can fall into. Um, this is not, this is not that bad of a horror film. It's just perhaps, uh, a sign of its times, you know, and, and it gets a little stuck in that. Um, but no, I, I thought it was all right. So that's it for me today. And, um, I'll check something else out and talk to you about it tomorrow. See you later.